Hey everybody. In today's video, I'm just going to do some really crazy experiments. A lot of times I don't have time to just sit down and play with crazy stuff, so I thought this would be a fun change for my gel press video. I have my 5x7 gel press set up in my MISTI. This is really the way I like to work with my gel press for a lot of reasons. And I have some little plastic cups with paint that I'm actually putting hair oil in. I am not even kidding you a little bit. <laughs> I, like many of you, have been watching some fun stuff happen with paint pours on YouTube. And that kind of takes up more space than I have. And it's a little bit messy, even though I am not afraid of a mess at all. But I thought I would take some of those same principles and apply them to gel printing. I actually have another video similar to this that I'll show you. You can see some little cells opening up on the paint that I've put on the plate here. This is really a pretty mild reaction. It's different from what I'll get later. But you definitely can see that the silicone in the hair oil, or whatever that substance is, it acts like silicone, is separating that paint and creating some really interesting textures. So as I play, this will get more pronounced. Now the thing about creating cells, as you'll see in my other video that I'll link you guys to, is that since you're putting the paper down on top of these formations, sometimes they aren't as clear as they appear on the plate, but you can see a lot of those little fun openings that are created. Later in the video, I have a way to capture all that stuff that's going on underneath the surface where the paper is that I just discovered just by spending a little bit of time and freely experimenting, which I encourage you to do, especially with your gel press. There's so much sort of accidental magic that happens when you sit down in a gel printing session. <laughs> and unlike Sally Lynn McDonald, I never document anything I'm doing <laughs> that isn't in a video. She's real good about documenting sort of her step by step process. Everything I do is 100% not repeatable <laughs> unless it's filmed because I just don't have the patience to do that. And I really appreciate that she does that for those of us that want to be able to recreate something. For me, my gel press is a very ephemeral medium and it's just sort of lost to time after I create it unless it's on video. So you can see that a little bit of paint goes a long way. I don't, I'm not using much paint in this video at all, really. And you just need a little popsicle stick and a little cup to mix up the oil. And I'll link you to the specific oil that I used. I'm also using a catalyst wedge. I found that this worked better than the brayer for some reason. There's something about scraping across the paint rather than rolling it, as you'll see here as you see this bloom start to happen up at the top that allows that magic of that silicone separation to be more prominent. I just love the way this looks. I think it's so much fun. Really, really unique textures. And I know it looks like I don't have enough paint, but I promise I do have enough paint. <laughs> so don't feel like you need to fill up a whole cup of paint because I think a lot of it will go to waste. Now I'm adding a little bit of yellow and I'm not using pure paint at any point, even for my pickup prints during this video. I'm still just using the paint that has the hair oil mixed into it. So here I'm doing a pickup print just with that same yellow paint when trying to clean the plate of those layers below it. So now I'll speed this up and I'll do several of these in a row so you can really see what the oil does. And mixing dark and light colors, I found, really gives you some cool effects. And you can see how vigorously the paint is forming those little cells 
And again, when you press the paper down on top of it, it's not as pronounced because you're smushing the paint around on the plate. But later on, what's left on the plate that has the larger cellular structures in it, I will show you how to pick that up and really preserve it in some beautiful pickup prints towards the end. You can also let this dry which I will do later because you can see after I've removed the paint, see all those openings? But you can see even on the plate how much detail is left. And that's great for picking up a dried paint print like I'll do later. But look at that beautiful texture. I just love that. And I even have some little dendritic uh, effects there. I'll link you to my dendritic printing video as well. And you can layer wet paint on top of wet paint. You'll see that the bubbles are getting more pronounced there. So now here are some dried bubbles. And I'm going to go back on top of this dried paint and I'm going to do layer after layer of pickup prints by putting wet paint on top of the dry and just pick up a little bit at a time. But you'll see as I go down through these layers of prints that the very last prints have the most detail of those little cells that I created. So here's the first one where I'm just pulling off some sort of landscape looking shapes with the pink. You can see that the green is actually the layer that's closest to the plate. And then I'll do one with this dark, dark blue. The more you press down onto the plate, the more of the dried paint you'll pick up. And now you can start to see that the layers with the cellular structures in them are starting to come up and show on top of the print that I'm pulling, which is actually the paint that was closest to the plate. And this is where the real magic happened in this technique for me. Those look like little stars. It looks like a landscape scene and there are little twinkling lights from those cells that were on that bottom layer. And I just think that is spectacular. And then the layer that is on top of that, so the paint that I'm putting on now, on top of the dried paint, that's a softer, more impressionistic looking background in contrast with these sort of landscape structures that have that very well-defined cells in them. This one looks sort of wintry to me. So I'll come back with the yellow. Again, I'm just using the rest of that paint with the oil in it and you can see cells forming right before I print. And this is a really nice contrast on here with the yellow background and then that green and blue that's closer to the bottom of the plate. To me it looks like mountains or structures near water and then there are reflections. And then down here you can see that bright blue that I'm picking up from another ghost layer. It's like walking backwards through your process. Now these are my favorite, the ones with the light blue. They picked up not only a lot of the cellular structure on the bottom, but this particular color combination I think is really beautiful and creates a very harmonious scene. So I can't resist. I have to do another one with the blue and I get some good transparency with this paint. And look at those cells forming. I must be down to the bottom where I have mostly oil left. And so it creates almost a snowy texture in the background while leaving the landscape forms alone. And so there's contrast between that dried paint that I'm picking up and the background. And then finally, I would encourage you to do a complementary color. These are always very dramatic. I could tell I was getting to the end here of my paint. So I used a catalyst wedge to make sure I got the most paint possible off the plate. But that bright quinacridone magenta against the green structures is so, so beautiful. And one of my favorite looks in gel printing. So here are some of the prints by themselves and then finished cards with these background prints. Sometimes it's hard to cut up a print and make it into a card, but I did have fun doing that 
with some of these prints. So yes, you can go into your hair product selection in your house and still have fun with your gel press. So experiment and enjoy it. Thanks so much for watching.